Hi, my name's Ray. I'm from the podcast Launch Co. I'm here with Prosper on the Online Prosperity Show. Uh, today, we're going to be talking all things podcasting, how podcasting can change your life. Uh, we're going to follow the six P's of podcasting. Are you ready to do this? Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got Ray, the podcast coach himself. Ray, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing fantastic, Prosper. Always great to be around your energy. <laughs> you caught me there. Well, you know what? There's always time for people like you because you're teaching people how to actually start a podcast. You're teaching people how to actually, um, you know, make their way through the whole entrepreneurial journey. Now, one of the most fascinating developments in our modern culture um, was the radio. And now that is now transcending into the podcast, which you have become a guru of. So that's the reason why we've brought you here so that you can explain to us exactly how can somebody start a podcast? Why is it essential? And what sort of things um, you know, um, they should look out for when they're looking out at a podcast. Now, Ray, tell us a little bit about what got you started with the whole podcast journey. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think if th there's a lot to unpack and uh, I'll be as brief as I possibly can. But with, um, with the podcasting, for me, I, I could never really find my flow when it came to blogging. So I've been in digital marketing for 15, 16 years and blogs, is, blogs were a big thing. And then you came along YouTube and there's people doing video content and I kind of really liked the video side of things. I started a blog challenge with some friends initially and that kind of went okay, but I just couldn't really get in the groove of blogging and being consistent. So then we turned it into a vlog challenge and we did like a 30 day vlog challenge where we just made one video every day for 30 days. And during this vlog challenge, I kind of really got comfortable with speaking and, and, the, and the video camera and all that. And during that I went, Oh, maybe I should start a podcast. Um, and that's pretty much where the idea was born. And I think it was like on day 24, 25, I mentioned this whole podcast idea. And then by like day 28, my co-host of the Razor Sharp show, he reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in being like having a co-host? And his name's Matt. And together we kind of went from one idea to the other and we set a launch date. And uh, a year and a half later, we have a podcast that's just very close to get into episode 100. And we're very excited about the amount of content and the people we've been able to meet and the doors that have swung open because of the fact that we've got a podcast. So now we're out there kind of, you know, helping people get started with their podcast because we believe that it should be an essential part of a marketing mix. If you're an entrepreneur and you're running a business, we definitely believe that podcasting should sit there just as strong as a YouTube channel or an Instagram um, account and, uh, and use it as a way of connecting with key people in influence and positioning yourself as that authority and, um, you know, person of, 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 of knowledge and, and, and connecting the audience with the guests similar to what you're doing on your show. Understandable. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, these days, everybody can be their own media company. Everybody can be a platform that actually gives information to other people because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, you create the know, you create the like, you create the trust, all right? But there's always a whole lot of work behind the scenes that goes on to creating a podcast. First of all, you mentioned that you were not really good at blogging and then you now found yourself, um, you know, uh, you know, churning out content through a, the podcast. Do you actually need to have a face for radio to be able to start um, a, a podcast? No, no, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, I think that the thing for me is that that got me across the line was I went and listened to a lot of the people who were doing really well in podcasting. And I went and listened to their like first, second, third and fourth episode. And I realized that they weren't as polished as what they were now. So I kind of learned really quickly not to compare my now with someone else's later. And I thought to myself, well, if they could polish themselves to be a really good interviewer and to be really good on the microphone, then I can as well. So I think as long as you can speak and you can 
um, articulate really nicely. You know, I, we've got people that we're helping that are worried because of accents and culture barriers and things like that. And I think that's what actually makes you uniquely you and no one can copy your style, your voice and your tone and the way that you get things done. So podcasting is a great way. Like we can all sustain conversations, but we, you know, I struggle writing sentences. I'd get emails from people saying, oh, you've spelt this word wrong on this blog. And I'm like, you know, or, you know, you've used the wrong there in that context, you know, and, I, and it always made me feel like a dummy type of thing, but podcasting, I can say whatever I want. And, uh, you know, it, it just is a lot more comfortable for me, but others are really afraid of the microphone or the camera and things like that. But it's all about baby steps and, you know, it's, it's about just, you know, moving the needle just that little bit every day or every week. Oh, thank you. Now I'm not shy to put my podcast out there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Just got to hit the publish button. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people, you know, inhibit themselves because they're afraid, you know, they're not going to come out as eloquent or as good as you sound right now. So it, all, it already stops them in their tracks. Now, not only is it them personally that might, um, you know, inhibit them, what sort of equipment would you, um, you know, encourage somebody to sort of start off with? Because, um, I, I bet the, the microphone you have, you're, you're sounding like you're sitting right next to me yeah, right now. So it must be some sort of expensive equipment. So yeah. what sort of yeah equipment can you just recommend somebody who's just starting out? Absolutely. So the equipment that we use nowadays, we use as a reward. So when we first started, we had cheap $30 microphones from eBay. Um, it, it, you know, I was, I was using my iPhone um, sometimes to record an interview because that's the only technology I had. So getting it done is probably the more important thing. And, and, uh, and we kind of went, well, when we hit episode 30, we'll upgrade our equipment. When we hit episode 50, we will upgrade something else. And over the years, we've slowly progressed into the technology that we have today. But if you kind of want to get really started, there is a really good microphone that's a USB microphone that plugs into your computer and it's the ATR2100. Um, and that's by Audio Technica. And that's probably the best microphone to get started with. It's $99, but um, it's, it's a really good microphone. Um, that's the microphone that my co-host Matt uses. But you know, if you're just getting started, any microphone will do. Um, it, it's about actually creating the content and, and rewarding yourself along the way. Because a lot of people, you know, I've met people who have gone out and, you know, got mixers and boom arms and pop filters and all these other podcasting gadgets and spent four, five, six hundred dollars before they've even recorded their first show, before they even know what the name's going to be or who they're going to interview or their show flow. So, you know, at the Podcast Launch Co, we have our six P's of podcasting and we take people through, you know, what you need to do at certain times. And, you know, technology and equipment is in like the fourth P um, or the or third, yeah, fourth P where, you know, before that you even need to know the purpose of why you're doing it and things like that. So get clear on why you're doing a podcast and what you want it to look like in six to 12 months time and then geek out and reward yourself as the show progresses. Understandable. So obviously now that we've got the man behind the microphone, we've found a microphone for him. What then would be the next thing you keep hinting about six P's? Is that like a process that people have to um, go through? If it is, can you just walk us through your process? Sure. So the six P's um, is um, what we kind of wish we had when we were starting our podcast. So it's something that we've put together. Cause, Cause what we did is when Matt and I decided to start our podcast, we put a Trello board together and we started putting things in different columns. And then about six months later, we kind of went, Oh, look at this. We've kind of accidentally created like a little bit of a framework. Cause we kind of had certain cards in our why and we had certain cards in, you know, what the show is going to look like. And we had, you know, the names of them were different. Um, and a little bit more of a to-do list. But what happened is we kind of accidentally created our framework, which we now teach in our workshops and um, around, you know, online and things like that. So the six P's of podcasting start with the first one, which is purpose. And that's really getting to know why you're doing what you're doing and, who, and, and, and why, why this podcast is going to get you out of bed at, in the morning or at night, because sometimes your guests are at three o'clock in the morning. So you have to, you know, get up at all hours of the morning to make podcasts work. Um, the second P is plan. And that's when you start now thinking about what your show format looks like. Um, 
You can start planning what your launch is going to look like. You can start picking your dates. And we, we really encourage people to get like accountability to share the story and get maybe an accountability partner and say, I'm going to launch a podcast on this day. Um, what I did was kind of announce it on Facebook and said, you know, we're going to start a podcast and this is what it's called. And this is the date that the first episode is going to come out to you so that, you know, I used Facebook as a way of my accountability. And when Matt came into the equation, he was an accountability because now I wasn't just letting myself down. I was letting him down as well. The third P is platform, and that's where we start talking about, you know, where the show's going to live, are you going to have a website, what your artwork looks like, your branding, and so forth. Then our fourth P is produce, and that's when we start talking about equipment, how to set up the room, um, how to talk to a guest, uh, pre-show, post-show, all that kind of um, interviewing tips and so forth. Then we move into publish, which is our fifth P and publish is when you actually start publishing the episode. Now we recommend as a starting podcaster that you edit your own shows and you get really familiar with what your show flow looks like and how your intro works and all that, because it's really important that you know what it looks like in order for you to teach someone else. So now, you know, 12 months later, we got our, um, editor on board and now our shows are edited by someone else but that was something that took a whole year uh, to happen and has only been happening for the last six months and then the 6p which is really important which is promote which a lot of people don't do really well we say now that you've got this content and you've spent the time with the guest and you've got all this knowledge it's a real gift to share that to the world so don't sit on your episodes and don't you know just put them on the website and have them there as a secret promote the shit out of them because it's really important to go far and wide and share that experience with with the rest of the world so promoting is our last p um and you know that's however you really want to promote social media email lists you know all the marketing side of things that kind of kick into any uh, marketing mix Understandable. So obviously Rome wasn't built in a day. It took you um, a good 12 months to actually master the equipment, master, um, you know, the editing side of things. And um, like what Ray says, you should never look at somebody's present and, you know, anticipate that that's where you're supposed to be. Just look at where they started off and see how, um, you know, you can best grow yourself into that person. Now, um, Ray, can you just let us know, just in case somebody is sitting here and then they probably have a mic in hand right now. They're probably on the phone to Fiverr ringing somebody to design a logo for their podcast. How yep. can they get a hold of you so that they can, um, uh, you know, figure out how they can get started with your guys' courses? Yeah, awesome. So we've got our website, which is the podcastlaunch.co. So we're basically the company that can help you launch your podcast. And on the Podcast Launch Co website, we have lots of videos and how-to guides and tips and tricks. And we actually break the website up into the 6P framework. So if you're someone who already knows your plan and you know your purpose and you've got equipment, you can kind of skip those P's and go into the other P's that you may be struggling with, like maybe promote. And you can dive into that and uh, go a little bit further. And then we have our mastermind and our training programs um, and we run regular workshops around Melbourne mainly. Um, but we're looking at a way that we can run workshops, capture them and then share them online as well. Um, so, you know, we've, um, we're basically in the process now of putting together our 2018 roadmap and really seeing what that looks like. We've got a goal to kind of help hundred people launch their podcasts in the next kind of 12 months. Um, and, uh, we, we, we're very excited when people reach out to us and say, Oh, well down at the Yarra library podcasting event. And we spent the day with you and I've just recorded my first episode. So that's a really rewarding, uh, feeling. So people don't even have to kind of be, uh, on our program, they could just come to one of our workshops and, you know, get our workbook and fill the workbook out and, and, and go on their way. Good stuff, man. I, I'm really glad that you have a pledge to help the hundred people. And if there's anything that we can also do from this end to help you reach out to those hundred people, uh, more than happy, um, you know, to help out. Now, Ray, somebody might just be sitting and they probably know they need to do this. They probably have heard you speak about this. They've already looked at your website while we were talking and now they're just sitting there and don't know how to actually just begin. What sort of word of advice can you just give somebody? Because they might think maybe I'm still not good enough. Maybe they might think nobody's going to listen to me. They might think 
there's 500 million other web uh, podcasts out there. Why would mine be different? Yeah, it would be a very lonely and quiet world if everyone kind of never took action to start their YouTube channel or to start their blog or to start their business. Um, so I think, you know, everything starts as an idea and it needs to eventuate with that. Our biggest advice for anyone starting out is just take small steps, but big enough to be outside your comfort zone. So if everything's feeling too comfortable, then you're probably not growing enough. So we really push people um, like that's why we call ourselves podcast coaches because we kind of feel like we're like a team coach, like a sport coach. Our role is to push your boundaries and get you in that ne next level. So, you know, if, if you've just got the idea, the next step is to get on Fiverr, like you've said, and get an, an artwork starting to get designed. Even if they're just three really bad designs, at least you're making some progress and you're putting the right energy out into the universe to say, I'm committing to this project and I want to move this project forward. And then funny things start happening. Like, you know, when I committed to the universe that I wanted to start a podcast, all of a sudden a co-host appeared, you know, now Matt and I hadn't connected for years before that email that he sent to say, Hey, I'm really inspired by what you're doing. And I want to be a podcast co-host with you. Um, so it's really interesting that once you commit, um, you know, make, make a post on Facebook and say, I want to start a podcast. I remember the day that I put a podcast post out asking for guests um, and I had probably about 12 or 15 people say that they're interested to be on a guest on my show and I didn't know what the name was. I didn't know what the format was going to be like. I didn't even have an example to say, hey, this is what the show is going to look like. People were just keen to be on a podcast, not even knowing what it was going to be about. So, you know, don't be afraid that you're not going to be able to get guests and that you're going to run out of things to, to talk about because very quickly you can just Google something and share your opinion about it. Um, and so baby steps, but outside your comfort zone is probably the, the, the underlying uh, advice for that. Understandable. Well, Ray, thank you so much for your time and your expertise, because at the end of the day, we are out here to create for and relate to those we're going to be taking money off of. So if your channel is probably going to be voice, you might as well jump on um, and start creating a podcast so that your customers can hear your value because you are paid in direct proportion to the value you're putting out there in the universe. And if you're not utilizing, um, you know, the resources that are out there, people like Ray who've got the expertise and have already been there, done that, did, done the mistakes for you to just go in and learn from them, um, you know, how to be, do and have a podcast that would actually make your business profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much, Ray, once again. No problem. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great stuff. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do because we're going to be having experts like Ray that know what they're doing, have been there and are out in the trenches doing what it is that you really want to be doing for your business. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. I can't tell. <laughs> You're very good. That was good. Uh, <laughs> Great. All right. And the final. No worries. Cool. And the final.